this video I'm going to be doing a real-time demo of a portrait painting of reporter Clive Myrie uh, and this is for week two of Sky Portrait Artist of the Week season three. Just like last week I'm going to be using my A2 mixed media paper by Dalla Rowney and I'm actually going to be using the same base colour that I used last week for Nicola. When I mixed that up I had a little bit of excess and this is this is what I had left which is why it doesn't quite go to the edges of the painting. And I'm going to do my drawing once again with some watercolour markers. So I've got my Peacock Blue marker by Spectrum Noir and I've also got my Winsor & Newton uh, orange marker as well. So what I'm going to do here, though, is last week I just kind of time lapsed the drawing and I thought what I would do this week is I'll talk about what I'm doing with the drawing. But what I'll do is I'll put on screen when the actual painting bit of the video begins. So that if, if you want to skip ahead to that, then obviously feel free. Um, but the reason I thought I'd chat a little bit about the drawing here is I don't think for any of the portrait painting videos I've done so far on the channel, um, I don't think I've actually chatted much about how I approach, in, you know, not in detail at least, how I approach drawing uh, for, for a portrait. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm starting out with my orange and as you can see I'm using the brush tip of the marker pen and I started to put in an outline of the head and I just realised perhaps because I was chatting I made it a little bit smaller than I wanted so I'm just kind of correcting that at the moment. And what I do here is um, I basically I'm obviously looking at my reference and I'm just trying to get a pretty good outline of the head. And while I'm kind of, how can I put this, while I'm definitely thinking about what I'm doing, I'm not thinking too hard, if that makes any sense. So what I'm doing is kind of just letting my arm flow as I look at the, at my reference photo of Clive. And just trying to, you know, trust my eye and my hand to get it right. Now, you know, obviously doing it this way, sometimes it works out better than others. Um, on average, you know, the more you practice it, I would say, you know, the better you, you're going to get. But it does create a nice sort of freedom of line if you don't try too hard, just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm barely gripping the, the marker pen here. And I'm just sort of letting the, the nib of the marker kind of skip across the surface of, of the paper and just trying to stay relaxed really both mentally and physically now you don't want to try too hard at this stage so the advantage of doing it this way is uh, it avoids you becoming too kind of precious and you know tight in terms of the drawing and when it works you know, on the occasions it works really well then you get a lovely lively loose drawing uh, which often captures something about the sitter that you might not have otherwise achieved. The downside of this is that you don't have any sort of you know strong measuring system and because I'm working pretty quickly I'm not really having much time to consider you know in great detail what I'm doing but I think what I, but this leads me on to the second stage of the drawing where I will you know make corrections. Um, now that said I still think it, you know, even though I'm going to have, probably have to correct, I still think it's a very, very worthwhile exercise because I think it's a really good way to just improve your obs observational skills. And if you kind of keep your hand moving very fast, you have to kind of just subconsciously make strong, firm decisions about how you're going to sum up what you're seeing. Um, so I'm going so quickly that you know, I'm not, obviously I'm not going frantically around the the page but because I'm moving quickly I'm forced to just put down you know marks and I'm not really thinking of them as a mouth or a nose or an eye I'm just sort of copying the patterns of shapes that I see in the reference And if you remember from last week, the, the reason I'm using the orange on this background is, you know, it should hopefully, you know, meld or dissolve into the into the background reasonably well. So the initial drawing, while I, you know, I quite like some of that to show, um, you know, I don't want the colour that I put down with paint on top to be messed up too much. All right, well, we've undeniably got 
a face on the paper. It's not the best likeness of Clive, you know, certainly not as good as I would hope for, but um, to correct that or try and correct that, I'm now going to my peacock blue. So these markers have uh, a brush tip and that's what I was using with the orange. But they've also got a fine liner as well. And that's what I'm going to switch to now for the rest of the drawing. So the reason for using the blue is that it's higher contrast. So and, it, and obviously, you know, I'm going to be able to see my corrected line very easily, which is what I want when I come to paint in a, in a little bit. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this right hand eye. And one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to note, I don't always do it this way, but for the purposes of kind of giving people some tips for the video and for the drawing, I'm noting where the right hand corner of the eye is. So let's let's imagine it's there. Let's imagine I had that correct. And then I'm going to look at my reference and see when I look across to the other corner of the eye, is it higher, lower or on about the same level? And it's actually a bit higher. It's around about there, I would say. So what I can do now is look again carefully at my reference and put in a line for the the arc of that uh, upper lid and then looking carefully again at the curvature the lower lid comes across reasonably flat and then it curves upwards towards that other corner and then I can look at the shape that's left between the left hand edge of the iris and the corner of this eye and that's going to allow me to put the edge of that iris in then almost all of Clive's iris is visible but you know not quite and if anything I think I've made the top of this lid a little too high up but now we've got you know a semblance of, a, of an eye there now I can put in the upper lid or an indication of it at least. And then there's quite a strong line of shadow coming diagonally up here. Now again at this stage I don't want to be tempted into doing too much detail but some key things that are really jumping out at me. So big distinctions between uh, dark tone and light tone on the face are going to be helpful. Okay so now what I want to do is look at the distance between the, the upper lid on the right hand corner and the, the eyebrow. OK, and it actually is about there. And the lower edge of the eyebrow curves round until it becomes horizontal. And then it continues over here until it's round about there ish. Then I've got the left hand edge of the brow. And then with the expression, he's got like a partial frown as he's chatting away here. That's causing a curvature in the top of the brow there. And it's relatively horizontal there. And it, but it kind of thins out and curves back down there. OK, then he's got quite a deep crease in his forehead. Again, you know, frozen in time in this reference photo. So we can pop that in. And now we've got quite a useful bit of shadow over the brow of the nose here. So hang on a sec, let's get that right. There's, there's that curvy bit there. And then there's sort of a curved bit of shadow going over the nose. And the reason that's useful is the shape of the edge of that shadow helps to describe the bridge of the nose. That crease comes down to here and loops up into another crease which doesn't come up as high and has a different shape. Now I'm obviously moving across to the other eye. Now, the, generally speaking, when you look at somebody head on, the distance between one eye and the other is about an eye width. So by placing the end of my marker aligned with the right hand corner and my thumb here, I can then move the pen, keeping the thumb in the exact spot. And it, it appears that the position I've got the other eye in is about right. But now what I need to do is look carefully at my reference again and see, well, how does the height of this corner of the eye compare to the corner over here? Again, are they on the same level? Are, is one higher than the other? And I'm just checking that with my pen against my reference photo. And they look to be about the same level. 
once again I can look and check the height of the corner of the eye over here again we want it to be about the same size I've got it about right and again I think it's a little bit difficult to judge I think it might be slightly higher so I think it's about there and again I'm going to check the shape of the eye again so the reason this is so important is capturing a likeness is often you know a lot of it is in the shape of the eyes I find I mean, obviously it is the whole face, but the eyes are key, as are the corners of the mouth, um, I would say, is, is, is probably the next most important thing. OK, so again, I'm looking carefully at the, the lower lid, so it comes along there and then it dips down, comes down and then comes up again. Again, I can look at that little negative space. So I don't think there's much space actually between the iris and the right hand corner of the eye but the iris is about there again for whatever reason I, I think I've kind of made that lid a little too high so I'm going to lower that a bit and then the upper lid comes up here comes across and then there's kind of a little frown line there and then the lid kind of reappears there. And then there's kind of a curved shadow here. And something I haven't got quite right about the structure of the nose, I feel, but for, for now I'm gonna, gonna leave that. Um, okay, so now we look at this brow again. So now that, this part, lower edge of the brow comes up to here and then I have to look carefully at where the end of the eyebrow is and it does appear to go up and to the left until about here in a relatively straight line. And then more or less curves around, the upper line is more or less parallel with it but then there's a slight crease in the forehead there and again the, brow, the eyebrow kind of peters out as it curves down towards the left. OK, so I've got the eyes reasonably good. So now the thing I have to check is the distance between the edge of the eyebrow and the outline of the head. All right, so I don't think I've got that too bad on the right. So that's, that's OK. Let's you could do this with the corner of the eye as well. So let's do that here. And I would say that needs to come in a little bit there. And then this edge of the head is sloping to the left as it goes up. Or at least the hair, the hairline is, I should say. And then the top of the ear, at the angle I'm looking at the sitter, is actually down here. So I got that quite badly wrong. Just check that. No, not, not quite. It's, it's, it's a pretty, oh no, yeah, it's about level with the bottom of the eye there. And there's actually not as much of the ear showing as I've included. So again, now I'm looking more carefully at the shape of the ear. And the head kind of comes out to the, the left there. And so what's going on there? I've got a bit of a disjoint there, so I may have put that in the wrong spot. Hang on, let's just, let's just correct that. Yeah, so I think the ear needs to come a little bit closer than I had it actually. So it needs to be there. So I'm just with a damp finger, I'm just going to smudge that so that I don't get confused later. OK, so now uh, Clive has dark hair and it's quite a dark background behind him. So his hair is almost disappearing into the background in the reference. But nevertheless, you can just about see the outline. OK, so that's not too bad. Let's have a look at this other ear. Now the right hand ear. Now the right hand ear is actually uh, a little bit lower than the corner of this eye, so it starts around about there. Again, I just need to check the distance I've got between the eye and the side of the head. And again, looking more closely at the shape of his ears, they're a lot flatter on top at this angle than I had them. They come down there, and then this part of the cheek is almost vertical. 
cheek on the other side comes out a little more. I think the ear comes down there a bit more than I had. And then the angle of his lower cheek is about that. So I wasn't too far out there. Uh, that comes down at more or less the same angle until it's directly below that corner of the eye. So what I'm doing, as you've you know, pro probably gathered, is I'm measuring one thing relative to another. So you're always looking to find a bit of guidance to, to what's happening in terms of is this bit below the corner of the eye or is it below the iris? So now what I need to do is check the length of the nose. So if I measure the distance from between the corners of the eye, I'm just doing this on the reference at the moment, and, and that's much bigger than the length of the nose. So let me just measure the length of the nose and from the centre of the nose that basically goes to the outer corner of the eyes. So what I just measured was the distance from here to here and that should be the same as the length of the nose. And you can see that's not too far out. So if I do it with my pen and my thumb, it's not too far out. OK, so the main thing of concern is the shape of the bridge of the nose. I've got that a bit wrong. The other thing I can check is the angle of the nose. So the angle between here, the centre top of the nose and the bottom of the nose. I've got that. It should come down there ish. OK, so. Right. So now we look at the shadows on the nose. So it, there is a shadow line a little bit to the right of centre up here. And then. The nose becomes wider here. And. It kind of hits the top of the nostril more or less directly below that corner of the eye. It isn't quite so clear on the left because the light's coming in from the left, but nevertheless, we can still see what's going on. Again, it does the same thing, but I need to check to see what's going on with these two points. And this one is slightly lower than that one at the angle he's holding his head. So that's OK. So now I can put a nostril in and, and that because I know I've got the length right, I don't have to measure quite as carefully here. I can just kind of free free hand it a little bit. Put the line of the uh, upper edge of the nostril in there and there. And notice that the bottom of the centre of the nose is on about the same level as the bottom of the nostrils there. Then we've got the upper lip and the there is a special name, isn't there, for the crease in the upper lip here, the little um, depression. But I can't remember what that's called. Uh, nevertheless, we'll put that in. And then we need to look at the corners of the mouth. So the right hand corner of the mouth comes in directly below the right hand edge of the iris. The right hand side of the upper lip. Uh, comes down to about there. Again, we need to look at the asymmetry of the situation. So this point is considerably lower than the left hand side of the mouth. And that left hand side is pretty much underneath the centre of that lid. So that's that part of my drawing at the moment, I feel is reasonably good. But there is a difference in terms of the shape of the curvature of the, that left hand side of the lip compared to the right. Now we come down here for the bottom lip. Put that in. We can put in an, another indication of the, the lower edge of the upper lip here. Approximate shape of the upper lip. Looking carefully at the upper edge of the bottom lip as well. Get that shape reasonably correct. And now we can look at the teeth. Now, I don't need to go into a great amount of detail with the teeth, but it's, it's worth just popping in uh, the outline of those two top teeth, which have a slight gap between them. And then the lower teeth. I'll just put in as a you know a solid back, uh, a top edge basically uh, across here. Obviously, I'm going to paint over a lot of this. So, uh, so now we look at where the bottom of the edge of shadow under the the lower lip is, and then there are usually creases uh, in people's faces uh, from the outside of the nostril 
to um, towards the mouth. So on Clive, there's a, it's kind of a line here and then it kind of comes down here. Uh, he's also got quite a prominent shadow in this in this lighting. If the, if the lower lid is there, it kind of comes down there. And then we can do something similar on the other side of the face. And there's quite a distinctive little shadow there. A kind of crease in the mouth curves up a little touch there. Coming back up to the eyes. So we're building up the structure of the face gradually. Now I can look at this side, this cheek, the edge here. And as I'm getting more into the drawing, I'm better able to judge without having to take quite so much care because I've put in more and more of the framework. Now, you know, having said that, I've still got to be careful not to get too, too blasé, especially, you know, especially with portrait work. Um, it's very easy to lose the likeness. So with that in mind, let's just check. I've got this distance about right for the thickness of that shadow. Then there's a highlight region on the chin there. And then it kind of goes a little bit darker between here and here. But on, on the whole, I don't think that's too bad. Now, an area I often get wrong when I'm sort of doing my early freestyle sketch, as it were, is by the time I get to the neck, I start to get a little bit uh, well, careless, I suppose is the word. So I, I want to realign this scarf a little better. So the gap between the top of the scarf here and the lower jaw is very, very small. So I've got too big a gap. And where the the scarf comes to its lowest point there where it joins that bit there is directly below the edge of that right hand tooth so that needs to be about i think it needs to come down at a steeper angle actually yeah just a little bit steeper under that right tooth i think that's more like it not that this bit is that critical for you know in terms of the portrait at least not for what i'm doing today um and then under here it kind of the scarf rises up a little bit. There's a little bit of neck showing there. Curves round. Scarf comes in here. So I guess the challenge, you know, we always face as, as artists is that if I just showed you, or if I just looked at my own orange sketch of the way I'd put the scarf in, I would be fairly happy with that as a sketch because it's a reasonable approximation to a to a convincing scarf, you know, in terms of a simple line drawing. Um, but when I look at what's actually there, then it's a different kettle of fish. And, you know, so what I was going to say was that, that the challenge and the, you know, the great, one of the great joys of drawing is, you know, bringing ourselves into the, the moment and making sure we're looking at and drawing what is actually there and not what we're expecting to see. So there's quite a meditative aspect to drawing in that sense. All right, so I'm, I've, I've essentially done from the eyes down, so let's go up. Now the right hand edge of the head here, the hairline is pretty much vertical. Now the distance between the top of the nose and the hairline is about the same as the distance from the center of the nose to the right hand corner of the eye. So it's gonna be around about there. It's a little bit lower than I've got it, if, I've, if I measured that correctly. Let's do, again, let's do it with the pen. It's a little more reliable. Well, according to the pen measurement, it's even lower. So I'm just gonna check my reference again, make sure I measured that correctly. Yep, okay, so it's actually, if I go from the corner of the eye to the middle of the nose and then to the bottom of the brow there. It is actually about there. Okay, so let, let's do that and then we'll see if I've got it right. So if I go from there and the hairline kind of comes up here and then down at an angle there, up to there and then round to here, which means I need to adjust what I've done here on the outer outline of the head. Comes up to a peak at the center of the head as you would expect. And then comes out a little bit here and then kind of cuts in towards the ear. Okay, so we've got a drawing in place. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, 
wet a clean flat synthetic brush here and I'm going to use this to just soften a lot of the orange lines that I've put down so that the blue outline that I've put in is a little easier for me to see and uh, in doing this what I'm hoping to do is I'm, after I've done this what I'll do is I'll walk away from the drawing for a bit and then come back and look at it with fresh eyes and just see how happy I am with you know with the drawing as a whole in terms of the proportions so this is just like you know you don't have to do this but not, and I often don't but um, it's, a, it's I just thought I'd mention it because it's a neat little trick I think which helps you kind of just see the second uh, iteration of lines second approximation that you put down and not get too confused with the first stab at things and make sure you, you know things are going in the right direction okay well I'm going to walk away and um, uh, I'll be back in just well from your point of view I'll be back in a couple of seconds but I'm probably going to walk away for half an hour now all right well having walked away for a little bit a couple of things I've noticed now that I look at it again with fresh eyes well the first thing is that the hair needs to be a little uh, thinner here and the top of the head comes up here and then it's a it's actually a little lower down than I had it and then it comes down at a, an angle from about this point so um, what I'll do again just to sort of soften the the error line if you like again with my damp brush I can just soften the paint there put a little bit too much water on there but, but never mind um, and just kind of remove the previous iteration so I can kind of see what's going on now the other thing I want to do is look at the bridge of the nose again I mentioned earlier that I didn't get whoops I didn't get that quite right so let's see if I can improve that and while I'm here actually I'll also look much more closely at the shape of the eyes so for example here in the corner I can define that a little better and then that lid upper lid actually isn't too bad the, lo the lower lid is should come up a bit higher than I've got it though so there's less of a, a u-shape to it it's a lot flatter than I had it and then the shape of the iris is also incorrect here that needs to curve in more at the top perhaps gone a little bit overboard there but you know it's it's push, it's all it's always about sort of going in the right direction now the other eye let's look at that so the corner of the eye here now that I zoom in on my reference a bit isn't quite as doesn't have that bump in it that I that I put in comes up here comes down along there that bit's not too bad that bit's not too bad the iris uh, it's not actually too far out but there is actually a bit of the corner of the, the white of the eye showing on the left eye that curves around there and again I've got the lower lid too low so it comes round to about there and that's that's an improvement okay so there may still be further adjustments to do but now let's look at the bridge of the nose so I'm fairly happy with the lower part of the nose at the moment although it is perhaps I have perhaps made it a little too wide there or a little, a little too bulbous on, on those two lines and then comes up here it's kind of a line which of shadow which goes up there a line there and then I need to centralize that curved shadow line here and then let's look more carefully at the mouth just to make sure we've got that right so this upper lip here has got a more pronounced V in it than I had drawn there's also a reasonably hard little shadow line down there But on the whole, I don't think that's 
too bad. So I, th I think, you know, we're, we're close enough now that, you know, I can start painting. 